there. I'm going to talk about the brain and about Brodmann areas and just briefly about their functions in the brain. So I sketched these images. This is the lateral, uh, like the dorsal and lateral aspects of the, in this case, the left hemisphere, but I'm just going to use it to represent the left and right hemispheres unless I say otherwise. This is the medial aspect of the cerebrum. Uh, without cutting into the actual cerebral cortex. Just the thalamus here is cut. So I got these images off of Radiopedia, like I sketched them from there. Um, and I'm supposed to cite uh, Professor Frank uh, Gaylord, and this is Radiopedia, I sketched Radiopedia image 46670 for this one, and then 47208 for this one. So, now I'm gonna get started. So, Brahmin's areas 1, 2, and 3 you can find in the primary somatosensory cortex. That would be this area here. And that is in the postcentral gyrus, which is posterior to the central sulcus, also I think known as the sulcus of Raldonado or something. So 3, 1, and 2. So these represent areas that go along this gyrus like this, and they continue down. Uh, some of three, like 3A and 3B, you can find in the side of the actual sulcus here, the central sulcus. 3A and B pertain to proprioception and actually tactile like sensations. One and two are different sensory modalities might be some overlap, but these are kind of divided uh, latitudinally uh, in terms of, or if you want to think of, I guess, that this is north, not south, I guess this would be longitudinally. But in the brain, we usually talk about longitudinally as the rostral caudal axis. So I'll say latitudinally um, modalities are separated here. Um, so, then, but they also are put together and processed in this part of the brain. So, yes, they're divided by the modality, kind of. So, Brahman's area 3, 1, and 2. Brahman area 4 is the primary motor cortex and the pre-central sulcus, because this is rostral to the central sulcus here. And this is anterior, this is the front, so we say pre. Uh, this area contains the, like your upper motor neurons that can sometimes control multiple muscles. Uh, this is more wired, geared towards functionality instead of having one like neuron to one muscle fiber. So that's kind of how it's set up. After four, we have five. Five is kind of in the sulcus here. It actually runs along this gyrus and into the sulcus and then into the parietal operculum, which is the superior aspect uh, within the sylvian fissure or the lateral sulcus. If you go into the brain, it's on the underside um, or the superior aspect of the operculum. We call this area the operculum. We have the frontal operculum because the frontal lobe moves into there, you go there and the parietal lobe goes underneath, and then there's also the temporal operculum, which is on the inferior aspect. Back there is the, the insular cortex. Anyway, so five goes into that area, and five goes up, and immediately over to, so this is the precaneus, so we'll also draw five there. Um, I suppose three, one, and two are in this area too. So it's kind of like hard to really draw this because these sulci are not exactly corresponding with these sulci. In fact, you'll find in anatomy that sulci and gyri are kind of arbitrary sometimes. We just kind of define them as like an average kind of structure that you can find. Anyway, moving on. So that's three, one, and two. That's five. Four is probably somewhere in here. This is the paracentral lobule here medial aspect of the brain. So five, six. Six would be the premotor cortex. And that's this area here. Uh, it's kind of premotor means it's 
tells your primary motor cortex what to do mostly. About 30% of those neurons that are in your spinal column do come from this region, but about the other, like, vast majority come from the primary motor cortex. So, moving on. Seven would be your per superior parietal lobule, which is, and it also includes your primary, or this is your primary somatosensory cortex, then you have your somatosensory association cortex in this area. That includes seven, includes this area, also five is part of that as well. Um, Brahmin's area eight would be your frontal eye field up here in this region, which controls your eyes, like your saccades is one like your, you notice like if you look from one object to another, your eye just jumps. It controls that kind of movement consciously. If you damage this area of the brain, if someone tells you to look over here or look at something else, you can't. You can't really consciously look at something. Reflexively, you can move your eyes, but that's about it. But this can sometimes heal up after like two to four weeks because it's a pretty plastic area. And it's also important for attention and possibly for your endogenous attention, basically. And it's part of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So it's going to be a really important part of the brain, plastic. So that's eight. Nine is rostral to that. And that's also part of your dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, um, which is important in just like the short-term memory, um, actually executing a task, shuffling information from the rest of your brain to do a task. Ten. Oops. Romans area ten is part of your orbital frontal cortex, but it also has some short-term memory functions and some functions that overlap with your dors uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Area ten is. Um, probably an area that stores some of your autobiographical memories, by the way. Eight is also kind of part of this area as well, up in here. Nine and ten, the frontal pole, the medial frontal pole here. Uh, Eleven, if you can in this area. This would be your gy uh, gyrus rectus here. This would be your rostral sulcus, rostral corta, uh, gyrus here. This is area 11, which is important in like assessing rewards versus consequences for things. If you're motivated to do anything or you decide to do something, you were probably using this part of the brain first and it was telling these other regions what to do to, to, to actually execute that task. So after 11, we're going to skip from there is 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 because some of them don't even have uh, a hom homologue in the human brain and others are kind of abstract, so I'm going to talk about those. Brahman's area 17 is your primary visual cortex. The thin strip here. This is your macula of your primary visual cortex. 17 is I don't know, somewhere in here. Uh, that's the first place that your visual information goes to. Then you have other higher order processing areas, like 18 and 19, 18, 19, 18, 19, 18, 19. Uh, this is your lingual gyrus, which will process the information in your superior visual field. This is you know, as you can notice here, this, the lingual gyrus is a lot smaller than the cuneus here, which is this region, uh, which processes information from your inferior visual uh, field. So this whole area is a lot larger than the lingual gyrus there in the cuneus. Um, Brahmin's area 20 would be in the inferior parietal lobe, um, inferior parietal gyrus, I guess. And this is an important area for visual recognition. In fact, damage to certain areas, especially in the right side of the brain, because this is kind of lateralized a little bit, 
right and left uh, for different functions. If you're damaged on the right side, you may not recognize someone's face. That condition is called prosopagnosia. Um, other kinds of things that you would normally recognize, like what kind of car something is, or you know, might depend upon your occupation. That's probably an important area here. Um, it's, it would be in probably Brahman area 20. Brahman area 21 is concerned, um, at least part, part of it, or at least one of its functions, is higher level auditory processing. Not Brahman area 21. Brahman's area 22 uh, extends back to here even. Um, and like here. Uh, it's your primary auditory cortex and also includes part of Wernicke's region, which can interpret uh, language. Like when someone talks to you and you're interpreting what they're saying, you'd be using this area and also parts of like the, maybe the super marginal gyrus and the, uh, I don't know about the angular gyrus, but areas like in this region as well, which I'll talk about later. Um, so that's 22. 23 is in the... Singular gyrus. So 23 would be right here. Wait, 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 wait. One second here. 31, 23. Let's actually draw 23 here. Brahman's area 23 in your posterior cingulate cortex. This is an area that's active when you're not doing a task and you're just thinking, but you're not feeling like you have to pay attention to something. So it's kind of the, it's the inverse of an attentional network, but it still was when you're just thinking about something. This area is highly active during those times. Okay, 24 is also in the cingulate cortex, which is this area here, the cingulate gyrus, but it's more in the, the dorsal part, 24. And that one has some cognitive functions in recognizing when there's an error or something doesn't match up. This part is going to recognize that and relay that information up to the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. Uh, and also your dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex learns from that error kind of information next time. For example, there's a test. I've got to do this really quick because I only have 28 minutes here. Uh, let's see. Say you see this, and I tell you to tell me what color it is, or what color you see. Let's, let's just say what color it is, right? What do you see? Well, you're gonna wanna say red, from like this part of the brain here is wanna say red, right? But, but the actual semantic meaning is what? A different color, right? This part of your brain here probably says it's supposed to be red, right? You see green, like this. It's a little funny, it's called the Stroop test. Your cingulate cortex is very active during this, and so it's recognizing that there's a problem. And then that's also possibly important in learning too. And this area is important in first learning information, okay? So next, tw area 25 is in your par olfactory cortex, 25, uh, also called the subgenual area, because this is the genu of the corpus callosum, which is commissural fibers that go between your left and right hemispheres. Um, that's area Brahman's area 25. Might be relevant to depression when you take uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or a serotonin norepinephrine um, reuptake inhibitors, or even uh, tricyclic antidepressants, you're probably inhibiting the, the serotonin transporters in this area, which would be like maybe 2A and 2C, 5-HT, uh, 2A and 2C in this area, um, so that serotonin stays in the synapse instead of being sucked back up. This is important in mood and hunger and depression. Okay, 26. 26 would be right here. 26, and this would be part of your retrosplenial area, which we'll talk about a little bit when I get to area 30. Okay, uh, 27 is right here. 27 is also, it's in the 
colossal sulcus, just like 26, but 27 is closer to the hippocampus. Um, it's probably important in memory, but we don't know for sure, I guess, probably. You have to look it up. 28 is, don't think about problems there, 28. Oh yeah, 28 would be here. And that is your, in, like your ventral anterior rhinal cortex, which is below the Brahman's area 34, which I'm just gonna draw, okay? So that's your, this is the uncus, this is the ventral to the uncus. These are the first areas hit in Alzheimer's disease, um, when prions or like these, the amyloid, the beta amyloid plaque starts to build up and kill your brain. Those areas are affected, so that's 28, 29, is just around 26, but it's actually it's actually still in the sulcus. Um, 30 is the isthmus. So the retrosplenial area or retrosplenial cortex in this area, um, they don't really know what its functioning what its function actually is, but because of the importance of memory, forming new memories, and even recalling memories from stimuli in your brain, and then activating the appropriate areas in your brain. Uh, this area is probably, and because of like area 23 and this actual area is going to be 31 up here when we get to that, because of these areas being active in your default mode network that are, it's like always active, like when you're not thinking, um, it's the most metabolically active area in the brain in fact. Um, it's probably important to actually think it, like when you're thinking about something that happened in your past life. You're using these areas and probably part of your precuneus, which is area seven, just like this area up here. It still extends down there. You're probably using these areas to think. And you're also using areas in Brahmin's area 10 and 11 here, things that are really important to you in your life, like family, etc. you know, like, and things about yourself, like in these areas. You're using those. Uh, there's another area, probably in area 39, we haven't gotten to up there, the angular gyrus and the supermarginal gyrus that are active also during these times. So we're going to move on. 30, 31 is up there. I just talked about that one. That's in your po the superior posterior singular gyrus. 32 would be in the anterior, or I should say, let's just say the rostral anterior cingular cortex. This is the cingular gyrus, remember? So the anterior cingular cortex is this area here. This is in the anterior part, just in this area here. Then the area 33 is in the colossal sulcus, bordering the um, cingular cortex here, the anterior cingular cortex. 33, I don't know really what 33 does. 32 is probably important emotional processing. Remember I told you mood is down here. So this area is important in mood. Um, morality is more up here, but in weighing out options, like if you're gambling and you're, you're trying to decide, like, last time I did this, you know, I lost a bunch of money, this part of the brain is probably saying, you know, it's probably not a good idea. That was really bad last time. And this part of your brain is trying to sort out whether, you know, it's worth the reward or not. Like, so these areas kind of work together and the dorsolateral cortex with the tension. So I have to move on. Okay, so 34, that's the uncus. And that's important in uh, memory and storing new memories, creating new memories. Memory consolidation is probably important in that in some way. Um, working with the hippocampus and the dentate gyrus, which goes around your corpus callosum. So 35, 35 would be like down here, it actually goes around 28. That's your peri, uh, perirhinal cortex, 36. It goes around that. That's your ectorhinal cortex, it goes around. 37 is your fusiform area, or fusiform gyrus, but it's not really the fusiform gyrus that's 20 here. That's probably important for faces. This is probably more important for language visual language, like you see something and you like you see a letter and you know what it means, right? Like things that are basic to like language, you might understand here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I know and there's probably a lot more to learn about this. We only know so much about the brain. 38. 
is your temporal pole. This is the anterior part of the temporal pole. I don't know a lot about this part of the brain, but it's important, probably important early in Alzheimer's, whatever some of those symptoms, this would get hit pretty quick too, because it spreads from this region. So 38 would be important. But damage to this area though, ironically, maybe ironically, um, I've seen, at least on Wikipedia, might cause savant syndrome. So, uh, you know, savants can just remember a lot of information somehow. So sometimes brain damage is better for you. So maybe if you get hit in the head here, uh, you might hit the jackpot or something, you know? Okay, 39 is the angular gyrus. And that would be this region here on the lateral part of the brain. It's in the inferior parietal lobule. Um, if you damage that part of the brain, you can't write, you can't tell left from right. I guess it is lateralized probably, but I'm just kind of taking the average of things I've learned. Left and right, you can't tell apart, you can't draw, you can't do math, and like a calculator, things what it's called. Can't the other thing. Anyway, Robin's area 40. Um, that's the super marginal gyrus. That one might be important in social, like understanding people socially, um, making moral judgments about other people, trying to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Definitely important for understanding, and it is part of Wernicke's region. Remember, I told you this is the primary motor cortex, or primary auditory cortex in the superior temporal gyrus here. Well, this area is connected to that, and this area here. And things that I've read kind of lead me to think that understanding is basically, this is really important understanding something. When there's like, you take one piece of information and you understand the rest of the information. Also, it's connected to areas here in your brain that might be important in observing something else. It's part of the mirror network, which you have to kind of understand what you see to interpret it. And the arcuate fasciculus connects regions of this brain to this part of the brain. So maybe that's kind of a, that's kind of the rationale, kind of like language. Okay, 41 would be in this area here above 22 in the transverse temporal gyrus. Um, it's actually after Grauman area 42. So 42 would be next to 22 and then 41 after that. And then 52 is back there uh, next to the insular cortex, which is an area that has gyri that are parallel on the same plane as these gyri here, but back. Uh, I might talk about it more in another video. So 41 and 42, and these areas are important in actually hearing and interpreting what you hear. Um, there's actually a tonotopic map with different tones, um, and that's possibly rostral, the Heschel gyri, but um, when you actually interpret sound or hear music, you know, or hear any other kind of sounds, your brain is organizing that information before it actually tries to process it. And that's what Brobman's area is 41 and 42, 42 and 41 do. So 43 would be up in this area here. I don't know what it does, but it is just posterior to the, to the primary motor cortex, or actually the primary motor cortex kind of withers at this point. So this is actually the premotor area and the pars operculum for the Broca's area. So I'm not sure what 43 does, if there's if it has anything to do with speech or what it is, but it's from area 43, 44, pars operculum. It bends down and it actually goes underneath in the sylvian fissure here, the lateral sulcus. The pars triangularis is brought area 45. That's important in like, it's important speech, and on the right side, uncertainty, on this side, pertains to speech, on the left side. Grumman's area 46, it's probably important in short-term memory and in inhibiting actions, and it's part of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Grumman's area 47 is the pars orbitalis. And that has some semantic functions um, that are also important to language, taking like a 
like a representation or taking like a, a meaning and then coming up with the representation. So on the left side, these areas are lateralized for language. On the right side, they might be lateralized for inhibiting an action or when you're surprised, something surprises you, um, or you have you decide to stop. Like if you're surprised, you're probably activating this area, right? And then you may decide, oh my gosh, I need to change what I'm doing. Or if you're startled, for example, you have to all of a sudden stop your action and change. Well, this part of the brain on the other side, on, the, on your right hemisphere, tries to work that out and this part creates, uh, actually executes a different course of action. And this is interesting because this is the premotor cortex here, which is before your motor part of your brain, which makes sense. But, so for speech, this is like where your throat is and your vocal cords and stuff. So these areas are right next to that area. And on the other side, though, they might connect to other areas of your brain um, that are in the primary motor cortex here in Brahman's area 4 to help you change uh, your course of action. So 48 would be in this area here, hippocampal area, that's near your memory. Uh, 49 and 50 don't, and 51 don't really exist in the human brain. And 52, as I said, is back by your insular cortex behind areas 40, two and 41. So um, those are your Brahman areas in the brain. I hope you enjoyed this video. It wasn't that informative, but I had to go over a lot of areas. Uh, please like this if you like it. All right, bye.